Joining me now is Republican Senator Mike Braun of Indiana, who sits on the Health, Agriculture, Budget, and Environment Committees, as well as the Special Committee on Aging. Senator, thank you so much for joining us this morning. So uh, you probably just heard there my colleague Ron Allen reporting about the worsening crisis at nursing homes. Uh, it's really happening throughout the country. We now know that, certainly here in New York, but across the country as well. Should the federal government, in your opinion, step in and play a bigger role in response to this? So whether it's the federal, federal government or not, all along, I've said the approach should have been more targeted and selective at places most vulnerable. And you hear a story like that, and it's tragic. And we've had enough time, whether you'd marshal those efforts through the federal government or the nursing home uh, entities themselves or the state governments, that we should have done a much better job at protecting those most vulnerable, and of course, nursing home residents would be part of that, elderly with comorbidities. And from the get-go, uh, even before I left here, I was talking about that issue as well as the other thing we're dealing with is how do you do that along with restarting the economy? Let All me just, I can, can I just you, jump in really yeah. quick, Senator? I, I totally sure. understand the point you're saying about what we could have done, and we will get to that yeah. point at some point in the future, but we're still in this pandemic. These, these people are still dying today. Yeah. What do you think should be done today for these nursing homes? Should the federal government or state officials do more today to prevent more deaths? Definitely. And whether you do it through the federal government, you do it through the Nursing Home Association, this has been out there. It occurred with the first evidence we had out in the state of Washington. So why? I mean, you might make the case that that should have been marshaled from a federal uh, point of view. Uh, I would say that it could have just as easily have been done from the people in the trenches that would see this coming more clearly without the clumsiness of trying to do it through the federal government. However you look at it, it's tragic right. that nursing homes have not had an iron dome built around them, as well as the health care providers that have been in the trenches trying to fight it. We'll dispassionately get through all of that the next time, but it's sad that we've had to contend with it and we've had plenty of warning. Let me turn uh, for a moment to your work in the Senate and uh, ask you about your colleague, uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, insisting on liability protections for businesses in the next aid package. He said that was his red line. How does that not equal putting economic interests before health and safety of Americans? So all I can tell you is when I was back in Indiana, uh, the business community, small, medium and large, uh, is ready and willing to abide by the guidelines of having a, a healthy restart. They're also worried significantly about how in doing that they might have frivolous lawsuits crop up. And on the other hand, we know that state governments have carried the brunt of a lot of this. They've lost revenues gets into a more difficult argument on anything going from here forward because you got to bring into the context we've spent three trillion already i got a feeling that as we try to iron out try to get something together that's going to satisfy both points of view uh, i don't know that that's going to happen it is a real concern businesses are taking this seriously they don't want to be hit with frivolous lawsuits on the other hand, state governments have been hurt. Whether we're going to come together on that, I have no idea, because it's a lot more complicated than what we've done from the beginning of this up to what we did through 3.5. All right. So with all of the uh, all of that tied up in negotiations, as you outlined, uh, senators today will be holding a hearing on a judge uh, or judicial nomination. And take a look at what Democratic whip Dick Durbin said about that. Here we are in the third day, hundreds of people teaming around the U.S. Capitol because Senator McConnell is drawing us in. You think, well, you must be discussing the national health emergency. It's on everyone's mind. Not at all. It is all about uh, Senator McConnell calling us in here for a hearing this morning on his favorite federal judge in Kentucky, whom he wants to promote to the next highest level. We're in the middle of a national and global pandemic. Do you think that is the appropriate time for Senate, Mitch, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to be trying to confirm uh, a judicial nomination? So I can, all I can tell you is before we left in March, all of us were mostly following the protocol of what was in place. Uh, we were off five weeks. We have no way to actually consider any errors and omissions or anything we might want to do on COVID-19. And this is no different from what 
I've been contending with since I've been here a little over a year. I weighed in heavily on reforming the health care industry, climate. Most of that was on the back burner and we had to do something. And uh, I think Leader McConnell is right uh, when it's so hard to get anything down the legislative pike because so often we're the Hatfields and McCoys. Ironically, on health care reform, 80 senators came forward with trying to fix the system. Now the health care industry is reeling from the coronavirus. So, no, I, I think that being back here is smart. We're going to be safe. I hope the House gets back soon. We owe this to the American public, and I think we can do it safely. I really do. We're also covering the uh, whistleblower complaint that I'm sure you're familiar with now from ousted HHS official Dr. Rick Bright. He claims top administration uh, officials were aware of the threat back in early January. As you probably saw or heard, I just spoke to one of his lawyers, Lisa Banks, just a few minutes ago on this program. Watch what she said. They understood that this was potentially a deadly virus, very contagious, and that it wasn't going to be easily contained, uh, certainly not in China as it quickly spread to Southeast Asia, uh, but that it was certain to come uh, to the United States as well, despite what um, the administration was saying and what HHS leadership seemed to think. What do you make of this, Senator? Should there be an investigation into the early response by the administration to make sure that we, were, uh, that we are better prepared for the next crisis? There's been a lot of what I went through through uh, during the entire impeachment saga and now because you're talking about uh, in retrospect to do some of that. Um, I think that uh, begs the question, well, did anything happen correctly uh, from anybody that doesn't like the administration? I, for one, think that the two travel bans that were put in place, probably the biggest things that were done to keep this from even being worse. Uh, whenever it comes to a whistleblower, I'm going to be out of principle for that individual to have full latitude. Whether you're then going to take that into investigations, uh, I'm sure that committee will do what it wants to do anyway. Uh, I think it uh, distracts from what all of us came back here for in the Senate and when the House gets back here is to look forward, see what errors and omissions we need to correct with what we did at first, see how we do a smart restart to open up the economy. Uh, I'm not going to be one pushing for that. If it happens, uh, it seems to have its own momentum anyway. All right, Senator Mike Brown, unfortunately, we've run out of time. We're going to have to leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining us this hour. I appreciate your